The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you so we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am unworthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A story is told about a wise hermit who lived in a tiny hut deep in the forest. He began each day by offering prayers of gratitude for God's many gifts in his life. As he made a humble request for God to give him just the right words to encourage those he would meet throughout the day, to help them recognize God's loving presence in their lives. After his morning prayers, the hermit traveled throughout the surrounding towns, sharing his gifts with the people that he met one day, as the hermit returned to his tiny hut, he found a thief inside. The thief demanded that the hermit give him the greatest treasure that he possessed. In response, the hermit said, My friend, I am but a poor hermit. Anything that I have, I will freely give to you. If you need a bed to sleep in, please take it. If you need a cup to drink from or a plate to eat your food, I am happy to give it to you. But I'm afraid that my greatest treasure is something that I can only show to you, but sadly, I cannot give it to you. Baffled by the hermit's response, the thief demanded, show me this great treasure of which you speak. The hermit invited the thief to follow him in the forest as they traveled along the footpath that came to the edge of a large crystal clear lake. It displayed a dazzling mirror image of a distant countryside atop its smooth surface. The hermit pointed to the majestic site and said, this is the great treasure that I possess. It is the very face of God that is revealed in his creation. I can point you to it, but I cannot give it to you. I can point you to it, but I cannot give it to you. My brothers and sisters, as we look forward to Christmas, to that moment in time when God becomes present to us through the miracle of a virgin birth, Holy Mother Church encourages us to have joy on this third Sunday of Advent that is also called Gaudete Sunday, a word that means rejoice. To symbolize our joy, the church lights a rose-colored candle atop that Advent wreath to remind the church and the world that lasting joy is only possible when God's promised Messiah appears in our midst, the one who will bring true peace to the world and whose Davidic kingdom will never end. Perhaps the best way to understand joy of this day is for us to examine the life of someone who exhibits great joy that through their faith example, we might be inspired and challenged to find new ways to integrate joy into our lives 
especially during Christmas. To that end, I can think of no better example than someone who, motivated by her love for Jesus, desired to be an apostle of love and joy. That person is Saint Mother Teresa. It all began back in 1910, when Agnes Junxabo Jaxiu was born into a loving Catholic family in the village of Skopje, Albania. At the age of five, when Agnes received her first Holy Communion, she promised Jesus that she would place her hand in his and allow Jesus to lead her life, never denying Jesus anything that he would ask of her. That promise in the Albanian language is called Besa. In English, we can translate it to mean this. Even if the person to which you made that promise were to destroy your entire family, you would rather give your own life than even think about breaking your promise. When Agnes was 12 years old, she had an interior conviction that Jesus wanted her to become a missionary to the poor. Understandably, her parents rejected their daughter's request, thinking it was a youthful whim that would pass as she matured. Finally, at the age of 18, Agnes was accepted into the Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary, also known as the Loretto Sisters, a non-cloistered congregation of women who educated the poor. After moving from Albania to Ireland, Agnes was given the name Sister Teresa, after Saint Teresa of Lisieux. Confident that Jesus led her to this community, Teresa exhibited great joy as she energetically carried out her daily responsibilities. Still, Teresa had a deep interior sense that Jesus was calling her to a greater mission, to serve the poor in Calcutta. Ten years would pass as she wrote numerous letters asking permission to fulfill her calling before Teresa was granted permission to move to Calcutta. When the day finally arrived, Teresa beamed with joy as she knew Jesus had made this day possible. Once in Calcutta, Teresa came face to face with the horrific conditions of poverty, sickness, and human suffering that was only intensified by the 100 degree stifling heat. With no money and minimal resources to work with, Sister Teresa taught in the Loretto Mission School, trusting that Jesus would provide everything needed to carry out her mission. In her biographical book, Come Be My Light, there are many documented examples to illustrate the numerous ways that Jesus did provide for Teresa's needs. One such example occurred when she was teaching a school of 300 girls during a time of the Muslim-Hindu conflict that broke out in India. Known as the Great Killing, Calcutta became engulfed with bloodshed and rioting. In spite of the risks, however, and wanting food for her students, Teresa walked out into this war zone looking for supplies. Providentially, a British truck filled with soldiers passed by her. They stopped and told this little nun to get off the streets for, because they were unsafe to travel. After explaining that she needed food for the 300 girls that she was teaching, the British military drove her back safely to her school and unloaded the entire truck of food for those girls. As time passed, Teresa described a spiritual encounter with Jesus, believing that he wanted her to establish the Sisters of Charity, to satiate the thirst of Jesus on the cross. After many formal requests and letters, Pope Pius XII finally gave permission to create that religious congregation called the Sisters of Charity, under the condition that Teresa be its foundress and its mother superior. Mother Teresa was overwhelmed with joy for all that Jesus had accomplished through her little yes, as she immediately went into the slums wearing a worn-out sari and only carrying a rosary in her hand. When people asked Mother Teresa why she came to the slums, she replied, 
If my small sacrifice can bring one soul to know Jesus, then everything that I do is worth it. As people saw her gentle care for the sick and dying, they remarked it was like seeing the gospel come alive, like Jesus himself present among the poor. Others said it was like a light shining in the darkness of the slums. Mother Teresa never complained about the daily hardships and sacrifices that she endured. Rather, she thanked Jesus for allowing her to have such joy in her poverty, as she described seeing his face in the poor, in the suffering. For the next 50 years, Mother Teresa continued to lead the Sisters of Charity that had increased with missions in every country throughout the world. Her first and most important rule was that every sister spend at least one hour before the Blessed Sacrament each morning. This was necessary, said Mother, because the work is so difficult. Never forget the source of your strength, trusting that Jesus will provide everything you need to do that work. And that, my brothers and sisters, is a tiny glimpse into the joy that we celebrate today. To put our hand into the hand of Jesus as we say yes to whatever he might ask of us in our lives. Some of us may be called to collect and distribute food to the poor, while others are called to work in a mission field like Uganda. Some of us are called to visit the sick or imprisoned, while others are called to be educators or shepherds of the church. Jesus may call some of us to serve in the medical profession or enter politics or the legal profession to defend the dignity of the most vulnerable members of our society at the beginning of life and even at the end of life. And some of us may be called to the holy vocation of family, to be witnesses of God's love made present in this world as we dedicate ourselves to pass the faith on to a next generation, teaching them to love and follow Jesus. Whatever the Lord asks of us, may our response be generous. And so today, I began my homily with a story about a hermit who possessed a great treasure. It is a simple story, but it is also a parable. The hermit is the joyful soul with an unshakable faith that God has a perfect plan for his or her life. The thief is one who restlessly searches for great treasure with our get-it-at-all-cost materialistic world. And the great treasure is the joy we possess when we recognize the face of God in the sacraments, in nature, and in the faces of the people that we encounter each day. The words of the prophet Isaiah say it so well. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. John the Baptist also points to this joy when he said, look for the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the Son of God. Pray God that today we would allow Jesus to take our hand and lead us according to his will. Not only today, but every single day for the rest of our lives.